By the end of this video, you will have created a dust particle effect that plays whenever your player is running around on the ground. Let's get started. Let's start by adding some dust particles to our player's feet when our player runs. To give ourselves more room for testing this, I'm going to go ahead and just delete some of these tiles on our grid so we have more space for running around and testing out those particles are working. Next, I'll go to my player and in this case I'd like to create the play the particles as a separate game object attached to my player so I can position them. So I'm going to just create a new game object under my player and call this, well, we'll call it dust particles because that's what they're going to be. If I click this box up here, I can choose an icon and then I can visualize it a bit better where the actual particles position is over here. If I press W, I can position this around where my player's feet are going to be. And now I can start setting up the particles. I'm going to click add component and it's already selected here, so I'm going to add a particle system. Now, by default, I get these ugly purple things, which is basically because there is no material attached. What I need to do is scroll down to the bottom of the particle system, go to renderer, and over here where it says material, I can click this circle and I can add a default particle. I'm just going to type default dash particle, and that filters it to default particle and default particle system. I want this one here that says default particle. And we still can't see them, and that's because particles also use sorting. So over here, we need to choose a sorting layer ID, and I'm gonna pick game. And we can see they're going behind the terrain, and that's because our terrain is also on the game layer. I'm gonna move our player up first to go to his sprite renderer and move him up to order in layer five on game. And then I'm just going to move the particles to game layer 4. There we go. Now the particles and the player are both going to appear in front of the terrain. I also think that these default particles might look a little too blurry to pass for dust. But I recall in searching through this pack that there was a dust item in here, which I believe is for a particle. And here it is under other. So this is just a sprite 2D. And this is fine, we can turn this into a particle. This is actually a cool thing to see because you can basically take any 2D image and turn it into a particle if you do this. I'm gonna right click on it, go to create, go here to material, and just call this dust particle. Then I'm going to go in the shader up here. I'm going to go down to legacy shaders. I'm going to go to particles and type and select additive. Then within this texture over here, I'm going to drag this dust and there we go. Now we have a dust particle. If I click back on this guy, I can go back down to the renderer and instead of using this default particle, I can now drag in this dust particle and our particles turn into that dust sprite. Pretty cool. But right now they also don't look anything like how a dust particle should be. To fix this, let's change the emission shape. Well, the cone, while it may look okay, it's not gonna be the best for this instance. Number one, we're using a 3D game right now, so we are seeing depth, and particles by default are 3D objects. You can't tell too much what's happening. Well, actually you can. In the game view, you can see that our camera is centered and our player is over to the left, so you can see that our particles are actually shooting off into the background. In a 2D scene view, you can't really tell, but as soon as you switch to the game view, you can. So in this case, I'm gonna go back to the scene view. I'll change this to 3D for now, just to get a better idea what's going on. And then I'll change it from cone to edge, which just basically shoots the particles in a straight line. I'm going to change its Z rotation over here to 90. And now the particles are shooting away from the player. I also want to reduce its X scale so they're emitting closer together. Now that we have it set up like this, I'm going to switch back to a 2D view because it's just a little easier to see what's happening. Uh, well, there's a few things that need to be changed here still. Number one is they're lasting way too long. 
So I'm going to change this start lifetime to about half a second. And just to get some randomness in here, I'm going to click this drop down and select random between two constants and maybe set it so they appear between a quarter of a second and half a second in the length. Let's go over here now. We'll scroll down some more and we'll go to color over lifetime. Check this box and then we'll click this here and I'm going to click this top right point and set the alpha to zero so they fade out. I'm also going to set click size over lifetime, expand this, and then I'm going to change this shape here from this curve, and I can't change it yet because this is too low, but if I drag my mouse here, I can bring up this particle system curves, and there we go, uh, not that one, this is the one here. I'm going to select a downwards curve, so maybe this one, basically saying that they're gonna get smaller the longer they last. And I might not want them to fade out into nothing, so I can just play around with this until it looks okay for what I'm going for. Sure, that might work. Uh, lastly, I'm going to go to Emission. Rate over distance would be pretty good. This basically means that more particles would appear the faster we're moving, and none of them would appear if we're not moving fast at all. But there's a problem that's not going to make it possible for this, and I'll just show you what it is. Uh, with the rate over distance, no particles appear until I jump. And then they do appear kind of well, but obviously I want the particles to appear when I'm running and not when I'm jumping. Uh, this is because rate over distance works with a rigid body. Our jump, and well a rigid body and physics, our jump uses a rigid body. It's using add force. But for our left and right movement, we're just manipulating its transform via using transform.translate. So it doesn't work on this rate over distance particles. So we're going to just do this a bit programmatically, and I'm going to set a rate over time to 25. Now that works a bit better. I'll change that to zero. But you can see there's a few issues. The particles play all the time now. And when my player turns, they're still playing from the same spot and they also should not play when my player has stopped moving. So let's change and fix all of these things through code. I'll just change this back to 25 over time and zero over distance. I think I'm also going to make my X scaling a little smaller. There we go, that looks a little better. Okay, let's fix the rest of this in code. Back in the player movement script, we're going to need a couple of new references. So I'm going to make a serialized field, private particle system and we'll call this dust particles. And then I'm going to need a serialized field, private rigid body 2D, and we'll call this rigid body. Finally, I'm going to make a private float particles start pause. And excuse me, that should be a private vector two, not a float. Finally, we're starting to accumulate a number of variables here. And when that happens, I like to start organizing them a bit better. So I'm going to make a header for my variables and call these references. And then I'm going to make a header for any other variables down here and call this input. And I'll add some spacing. And then finally, I'll do hashtag region and then I'll type variables. And I'll go to the end of my variables and do hashtag end region which turns this into a collapsible area, so we don't need to look at all of that if we're not accessing them. In the start method, I'll set my particles start pause to be equal to dust particles dot transform dot local position. Make sure you use local position here because we want to set their position equal to their position relative to the player meaning we want their position to be relative to the player's foot over here and not where they are in the entire world. And then we can go down here to where we're flipping the character's X position and we can implement some similar logic for our particles. So if we're not flipping the player's position, it means the particles are in the right place, but we should still update them here anyways. So I'm going to say dust particles dot transform dot position equals particle start pause and excuse me this will cause an error an issue so we'll change that to local position 
And then here we'll do dust particles dot transform dot local position equals and we need to make a local reference to this variable. So we're going to say vector two particles pause equals particles start pause. And then we're going to say particles pause dot x times equals minus one f. And then we'll set it equal to particles pause this local variable right here. We'll also need to change the particles rotation because otherwise the particles will still be playing off to the left all the time. And the way we can do this is by saying dust particles dot transform dot rotation equals quaterion dot Euler. And here I'm just going to type 0, 0, 0 to set it equal to uh, zero rotation. And then we'll copy paste this down here and change the middle to 180. So if we're flipping the player, we're also going to rotate the particles by 180 degrees so they play in the other direction. Finally, let's come up here to our update and we're going to make a new method here for flipping our particles. So let's just call this flip particles and I'll put this above the flip character X. And one thing I think we're gonna need to also do is take this x pause last frame out of our flip character x and just move it to the bottom of update to make sure it's always the last thing it happens because we're going to need to make reference to this variable in our flip particles and we need to make sure that we're setting this after this method's going to get called and also excuse me this should not be flip particles this should be start stop particles because we're going to stop or start playing them based on our rigid body. So let's create this method here and we'll write private void start stop particles. And we can do a couple of conditions here. We can say if our rigid body dot velocity dot y does not equal zero, then we're not going to want to play any particles. And we can also say if x pause last frame does not equal transform dot position dot x, then we can say dust particles dot stop. So let me just do a couple comments here. If here we go, if our player is jumping or falling, or if they're standing still, stop playing the dust particles. And then we can say if dust particles is playing and we're going to put an exclamation in front of this then in other words dust particles dust is not currently playing then we can say dust particles dot play and the reason we're putting this in an if is because we don't want to repeatedly start playing them in which case they start off kind of smallish so we may end up never actually seeing them if we just keep telling them to play over and over and over Let's go back to Unity and test this out. Within Unity, we're going to need to first make sure our rigid body is hooked up to our player movement script. So in player movement, I'm going to drag that rigid body in, and I'll also need to drag the dust particles in. Also on the dust particles, I'm going to change the simulation space from local to world, which will give it a more natural effect. Here we go. So, oh. We must have done something wrong here by a little because they're playing when we're standing still and then they stop when we're moving. So let's just check that mistake in the code. And of course it's right here. I said if the X position last frame is not equal to our current position, then we should stop. But this should really be a double equals because we want to stop if these two positions are the same. So let's just go back and try that one more time. Here we are, and there we go. They are playing at the right time, they're flipping. I still think they're playing a little too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and probably maybe change their start speed so they're perhaps a little bit slower. Or maybe even just reduce the uh, their lifetime 0.15 to 0.3. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. And then I might raise their Y position a bit too. It's just a matter at this point at trying a few different things out and making sure you're happy ultimately with the particle effect that you've created.
In the next video, we'll be continuing to add particle effects, including these dust particles that are flying around in the background, and this particle effect that appears when my player double jumps using a burst emitter. We'll see you there. Thank you.